Today I wanted to talk about vitamin B12. Is your vitamin B12 level too low? Do you need supplements? And if so, which one should you get? Hey guys, my name is Sam Bailey and I'm a medical doctor based in New Zealand. Recently some of you have asked me to make a video on vitamin B12. I wanted to touch on the benefits of vitamin B12, which foods are high in B12 and the symptoms of B12 deficiency, and when do you need B12 treatment? Firstly, what is vitamin B12 and where do you get it from? Vitamin B12 is a water-soluble essential vitamin that our bodies can't make, so that means B12 needs to come from our diet. Vitamin B12 is naturally found in animal products, including fish, meat, poultry, eggs, milk, and milk products. Plant foods don't naturally contain vitamin B12, so if you are vegan, I'd try fortified vegan foods such as breakfast cereals. I'll link some of the foods you can get B12 from in the description. Why does your body need B12? Your body needs B12 to make new cells in the body, like red blood cells, for nerve function, and to make DNA. In fact, it is used almost everywhere in the body. Vitamin B12 exists in three natural forms in the body and contains the mineral cobalt, so compounds with vitamin B12 activity are called cobalamins. You'll notice that B12 supplements all contain the word cobalamin in them, and the vitamin is stored mainly in the liver, so that a small shortage can be compensated for, but once levels fall significantly, more severe symptoms occur. What are the symptoms of low B12? Vitamin B12 deficiency can be difficult to diagnose because there is such a range of non-specific symptoms initially. You may notice chronic fatigue, difficulty concentrating, being more run down and susceptible to infections, along with mood swings. More severe symptoms include depression, confusion, numbness in the limbs, coordination problems, constipation or diarrhea, altered taste and a sore mouth and tongue. One of the most fascinating effects in the blood is the development of macrocytosis or giant red blood cells. The macrocytosis resolves when B12 levels are restored. What causes B12 deficiency? The causes of B12 deficiency can be split into three main groups. Deficient supply, increased requirement or malabsorption. Deficient supply is due to not getting enough B12 through food, which is often the case for vegans, vegetarians, or people with an unbalanced diet. People have an increased requirement for vitamin B12 in pregnancy and lactation, chronic disease, serious infections, or with severe stress. Finally, malabsorption is when the body can't absorb enough vitamin B12, even though there is a sufficient dietary supply. There are a whole host of reasons for malabsorption, and some sneaky ones which can trip you up. I'll list them all in the description for you, but I also want to make you aware that certain medicines affect the absorption of vitamin B12. The most common example is metformin for diabetes, also colchicine, neomycin, and some anticonvulsants used to treat epilepsy. Also long-term use of medications that affect stomach acid production like ranitidine and omeprazole can worsen vitamin B12 deficiency. For the majority of people in the developed world, B12 deficiency is unlikely to develop because our bodies are very efficient at recycling B12. Additionally, the liver, which is about half of the body's B12, is thought to be able to store a supply that could last a few years. Heavy alcohol consumption can cause B12 deficiency through several mechanisms, including poor absorption and liver damage. How do you test for low B12? If you are at risk of having low B12 or you are having symptoms of B12 deficiency, I'd recommend that you get a blood test which will quickly tell you if you are deficient. Sometimes you may need further blood tests to look for other causes of B12 deficiency, like pernicious anemia. Is your vitamin B12 level low? The only way to know is to get your B12 blood level tested. A level below 200 picograms per mil or 150 picomoles per liter is low and usually requires supplements. Deficient levels are defined as less than 150 picograms per mil or less than 110 picomoles per liter. You have low B12, now what? Okay, 
So there's a wide selection of supplements which can come as capsules, pills, drops, injections and even as toothpaste. If your levels are very low, your doctor will most likely give you five injections of hydroxycobalamin over two to three weeks to quickly build your body's store of vitamin B12 back up. Then one injection will be given every three months, which will potentially be lifelong depending on the cause. The injections are given intramuscularly and intravenous injection is not required. Hydroxycobalamin is a natural form of B12 that is produced by most bacteria and the body has to convert it first to an active form to be used, but it is easily absorbed, lasts a long time and provides a very stable dose to the body. What's more is that it is an excellent detoxifier because it mops up cyanide and is therefore a perfect option for people who are trying to quit smoking. Hydroxycobalamin comes as an injection or as pills and capsules. The other natural forms of B12 are methylcobalamin and adenosylcobalamin. The synthetic version is called cyanocobalamin, which is a combination of vitamin B12 and the toxin cyanide. My personal preference is to avoid cyanocobalamin, even though it's cheaper, because overall it is an inferior product to the other natural forms of B12. What dose should you take of vitamin B12? (laughs) Okay, I hate to say this, but this gets a bit complicated because it depends on why you are taking B12 in the first place. Overall, if you can find a supplement that has a mix of the natural forms of B12 together, that is ideal as it mimics what happens normally in the body. I also prefer a capsule form because these tend to have no additives just cellulose and other purest and highest quality form of B12 supplements. Covering your daily requirement if you are vegan or vegetarian, a medium dose of between 150 to 250 micrograms per day will be enough. If you have an increased daily need of B12 or have some absorption difficulty, then a larger dose of 300 to 500 micrograms per day is recommended. Well, if you have multiple health problems, malabsorption, or suffer from low B12 levels or deficiency, then a thousand micrograms a day is recommended. Can you overdose on vitamin B12? Interestingly, there is no upper limit for B12 because of its low potential for toxicity. In two large trials, the HOPE and Norbit trials, they showed that vitamin B12 supplementation did not cause any serious adverse events when administered at doses of 400 micrograms for 40 months and 1,000 micrograms for five years. It should be noted, however, that there seems to be no advantage in taking extra high doses of B12 if your levels are already in the normal range. Your body can't do anything with the extra B12 apart from pee it out. What about the connection between vitamin B12 and folic acid? Great question. (laughs) Both vitamin B12 and folic acid, also called folate or vitamin B9, are very closely connected in their metabolism. Because the two vitamins are dependent on each other, a deficiency of vitamin B12 means that you can't use folic acid, so you end up with a functional folic acid deficiency. Another problem that can happen is when a person has a high folate level but is vitamin b12 deficient the folate can potentially mask the damaging effects of vitamin b12 deficiency on the neurological system so it is extremely important to correct any b12 deficiency immediately so other vitamins can work properly i hope you found this video helpful please hit the subscribe button for new videos every week and hit the bell to get notified when i post new videos on tuesdays Please let me know in the comments what you enjoyed about this video or what you want to learn more about. I also post on Odyssey if you prefer to watch me on another platform. Please go and take a look there. Thanks for watching.